here. It's so much prettier through the binoculars. Hmm. RS a fire kite in full bloom. I'm glad we got to see it in time, babe. Yeah. Almost once in a lifetime. It happened when we were toddlers. It'll happen again. But never this brightly. It's probably the rarest thing we'll ever see. <laughs> yeah. Rarer than black holes. <laughs> Rarer than pulsars. <laughs> okay, smarty pants. Yes. Rarer than magnetars, as far as we can see. But have you been watching those astronomy videos you used to make fun of me for watching? Oh, so now you tell me you're hooked. I guess you know what it is we're looking at then, hey? Close, but no, not a supernova. Though on my game show, I definitely give you bonus points because you are the loveliest, smartest, most attractive contestant I've ever had on my roof. Yeah, here, I brought a couple of extra blankets. <laughs> the stars can wait. I still want to make sure the one I love is all warm and bundled up first. What was that? Oh, yeah, no, not a supernova. Just a nova. Not that they knew the difference when they were naming them. Well, the supernova is the end bit where the star goes boom. It's fused all its hydrogen and wants one last way at saying... Booyah, universe. So, when the outside gets heavier, gravity starts getting too hectic, and the stars' outsides rush into the middle as hard and fast as they can. There, they smack into the core. Sadly for it, gravity and a giant star's worth of outer layers come together so hard that the poor thing gets crushed. Sometimes it'll become an itty-bitty white dwarf star. Our sun will do that. Sometimes, it's crushed so hard it turns into... <laughs> yes, the ultimate kitchen bin of the universe. A black hole. I wish we'd had these conversations more often. Anyway, the bits that weren't in the core bounce off and fly off into the galaxy, making heavy elements that Seed gas clouds that one day turn into even more solar systems, just like ours. Nope. Got you on a technicality, because I only just read this today. What we're looking at is like a false start. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tickle me. <laughs> hey, I told you it was different, babe. <laughs> I just wanted to lay out the scene for you. You know, try to impress you with my version of one of the universe's most beautiful stories of endings and new beginnings. RS Sophia Kai is a nova, not a supernova. That means we're looking at a couple of stars, not one. One giant, bright, <laughs> and full of gas. The other is one of those white dwarfs I mentioned. Really small, but extremely heavy. And it starts to drain everything off its partner, creating a big swirling disk of superheated, super dense gas falling down into the white dwarf. <laughs> yeah, mooching. It's a cosmic mooch. Kind of a sad way to put it. Hmm. But sometimes, as the gas is being pulled from the big, bright, impressive star, the disk becomes so dense and so hot that it causes a nuclear explosion. And it's massive. Like, so bright that we could see it with the naked eye all the way from here. <laughs> you could really be the one that's explaining this to me. You're right. But the bit that makes it rare is that it keeps happening to this one pair of stars. 
we've only seen this kind of thing ten times in the Milky Way, and barely at all from other galaxies. On the other hand, there are like nearly 40 of your favourites magnetised in our Milky Way. There's more. Sadly, one day the White Dwarf will have leached so much of its partner's bright layers that it will finally explode forever, sending its partner flying off into the galaxy while it collapses into a dark remnant of its former self. So, our sun will live for ages then? But that's because it's on its own, right? You get it, don't you? You know why I took the time to tell the story like that, yeah? Is that why you're crying? I'm sorry, babe. I wanted tonight to be like our first date, up here on the roof, because I knew it would be our last one. I know, I know, but I'm not going to hold you back with a long distance relationship while you go off to college and I stay here as a groundskeeper. I love you, I don't want to cause you the guilt or the... It's college. You'll meet someone who makes your heart flutter within a week. All I'll be is the rock keeping you down. I am not the only person who will ever love you, babe. But I love you enough to let you experience as much as you can. I don't know, maybe one day you'll be with an astronaut. Or even another marine biologist like you. No. I haven't stopped loving you. I never will. But I don't want the last chapter of this amazing, life-changing, hot, loving, caring relationship to be one of us getting drunk a hundred miles away from each other and resenting the other because we had to say no to someone. Or worse, resenting ourselves because we said yes. I can't. I can't do a long distance relationship even if you think you can. I look at you and the same lost kid who fell in love with you in middle school is still inside me and always will be. I'm not foolish enough to think I'm the right person for you for the rest of your life. The part of me that... No, stop. Just hold me. Part of me that genuinely loves you is excited to see who you go out and become without me holding you back. I look forward to meeting the person who you find to spend the rest of your life with. Knowing you, the real you, makes me know that I'll dig that person and that they'll probably end up being my best friend. Hell, if I find someone too, you can always go double date when you come back home to see your mother for holidays. Please, baby, please, think about it. Let's make tonight a beautiful end to the most beautiful thing that's ever happened to me. I don't want to lie to you and say we'll get through it together. I kind of don't think we should. Life's big. And I'm not too proud to admit that your goals in life are bigger than mine. So just love me. Let's watch one of the most perfect sights the universe can show us. Together. <laughs> and write the story of the perfect goodbye we said to our first loves. <laughs>